Welcome to Microsoft Windows 95 starts here. My name is Meg, and I'm the Network Manager at Parnell Aerospace. Recently, our entire company transitioned to Windows 95. I oversaw the transition, which included training several thousand employees in over 13 countries worldwide. Microsoft has invited me and some of my co-workers to share what we've learned by guiding you through the lessons in Starts Here. In Starts Here, you have four courses from which to choose. Since my job involves setting up Windows 95, I'll be your guide in the Quick Look course, which will help you transition to your new operating system. My co-worker, Anna, will be your guide in Up and Running. I manage the sales order department. Our goal is to provide high-quality, timely service. So I've become an expert on how to improve productivity. In Up and Running, we'll focus on how to get you working with Windows 95. Now let me introduce Ethan, who will be your guide in Getting Connected. I'm the National Sales Director. My job depends heavily on mobile computing. In Getting Connected, you'll learn about networks and computing away from the office, as well as using the Internet. Now meet JC. He'll guide you through the lessons in working smarter. Hi there. I assist the sales order department in managing their high productivity environment. I've got some tips in working smarter to help you get the maximum performance out of Windows 95. Before we get started with the lessons, Meg is going to give you a quick look at using Starts Here. Let's take a look at the Starts Here home screen. To see a description of each course, move your pointer over a course title. To select a course, just click the title. Within a course, you can click a section to see the corresponding list of lessons. If you'd like more information about a section, select About This Section from the top of the list and click here. To find out more about an individual lesson, select the lesson and click here to see an overview. You can also click here to take a quiz about the lesson. When you're ready to begin the lesson, click here to start. In a lesson, you get hands-on experience by following the step-by-step -step instructions and interacting directly with the Windows 95 environment. You can click here to see a demonstration of the procedure or click here to see a helpful tip. In addition to the step-by-step -step lessons, Starts Here provides lessons that demonstrate in-depth concepts such as networking and telecommunications. The titles of these lessons always appear in the form of a question, so they're easy to recognize. Well, that's all there is to it. Now let's get started. The power of Windows 95 is evident from The power of Windows 95 is evident from the moment you first log into your computer. There's a new look to your desktop with convenient icons for easy access to the features you use often. And you'll soon come to rely on the new start button and taskbar, which streamline your everyday tasks and help make you more productive. Quick Tour provides you with all the background information you need to understand the new Windows 95 interface. You'll be up to speed in no time at all. This lesson is an overview of some of the features that make Windows 95 the most powerful yet easy to use operating system for your computer. It delivers true multitasking, a desktop designed for greater productivity, improved file management, greater network ability, and much more. But in my opinion, the best thing about Windows 95 is that you're on familiar ground. You can still do the same tasks you're used to doing, like opening programs and files, and have the same freedom of movement, like clicking and dragging. 
except now you can do them faster and easier, with even greater flexibility. Windows 95 is a powerful operating system that adds a little fun to your everyday work. It simplifies the setup of software, plug-and-play hardware, and network connections. It also provides quick configuration for new hardware. The 32-bit operating system architecture of Windows 95 allows you to run multiple applications at once. It's compatible with all major networking systems. It handles peripheral resources, such as printing, in a true multitasking mode, and uses no real mode memory. Let's take a look at what Windows 95 can do. On the left side of your desktop, you can see the icons for frequently used programs. Double-clicking the My Computer icon opens the My Computer window, where you can quickly find and double-click your folders and files to open them. From the Network Neighborhood window, you can find folders and files on, on, on other computers that are connected to your network. Use the Recycle Bin window to view, retrieve, or permanently remove folders and files you have recently deleted. The Briefcase icon represents your online briefcase. It helps you coordinate the files on your laptop, your office computer, and your home computer. You can copy and link a file in Briefcase and later transfer it to another computer without wondering which file was the latest version. The Start button provides menu access to all the programs you regularly use, as well as to your most recently opened documents. It also provides you quick access to Help and quick access to the Windows 95 Find command. Every open program has an accompanying taskbar button on the Windows 95 taskbar. The taskbar makes it easier to move between programs and open windows. Clicking the Start button, pointing to Programs, and then clicking Windows Explorer gives you a view of your computer's contents in the form of a hierarchy, or tree. The left pane of the Exploring C Drive window, titled All Folders, displays the items on your computer, including the desktop, hard disk, and network drives. The right pane displays the contents of any item you click in the left pane. Use the scroll arrows on the vertical scroll bar in the left pane to view all the folders on your hard disk. If you click the minus sign in front of the C drive icon, you hide the list of folders. Now it's easier to see the drives associated with your hard disk, the network neighborhood, and your desktop icons. If you double click the C drive icon, the folders on your hard drive are displayed again. When you first install Windows 95, the setup program provides a standard configuration for your desktop, but you can change this to suit your needs. Using Control Panel, you can change your screen colors the way the keyboard or mouse works and other system settings. You begin by clicking the Start button, pointing to Settings, and then clicking Control Panel. The icons that appear in the Control Panel window vary depending on the hardware and software installed on your computer. For example, to change screen resolution, you would double-click the Display icon in the Control Panel window, click the Settings tab, and under Desktop Area, drag the slider to select the desired screen resolution in pixels. To make text on the screen easier to read, you would click the Font Size arrow and then click Large Fonts. To actually change your display settings, you would click Apply, and then click OK. To change your computer's date or time setting, double-click the Date Time icon in the Control Panel window. Click the Date and Time tab to adjust your system's clock or calendar. To properly shut down your computer before turning it off, click the Start button, click Shut Down, and then click one of the four options available in the Shutdown Windows dialog box. If you're not part of a network and are not using profiles, the dialog box includes only the first three options. Select the first option, Shut Down the Computer, when you are ready to turn off your computer. It is very important to properly shut down your computer in this manner before actually turning it off in order to ensure the integrity of the programs and files on your hard disk. Select the second option, Restart the Computer, 
before starting newly installed software or making other changes to your system. Select the third option, Restart the computer in MS-DOS mode, to close Windows 95 so you can use programs or commands that run only using MS-DOS. The fourth option, Close all programs and log on as a different user, allows someone else to log on to your computer without having to actually shut down. This is just a glimpse of what you can do with Windows 95. You'll soon start to feel comfortable with the new operating system. It doesn't take long to get used to dragging files from one place to another, or right-clicking in almost any window to get a list of common options. Because Windows 95 is intuitive and easy to use, you'll be up and running in no time.
One of the most useful advantages of working with Windows 95 is that it puts the features and files you use on a daily basis within easy reach. A click on the Start button puts you instantly in touch with everything from programs and shortcuts to recently opened documents to options for safely shutting down your computer. In this lesson, you'll see how effortlessly you can start a program, open a file, switch back and forth between windows using the taskbar, and close a program. On the Start menu, you can quickly access programs and recently used files, printers, the Control Panel, the Find feature, the Help feature, the Run command, and a command for shutting down the system. Click the Start button. On the Start menu, point to Programs. Some of your programs are in groups which are displayed as folders. Point to Accessories, and then click WordPad. A blank WordPad document appears on the desktop, and a Document WordPad Taskbar button appears on the taskbar. Click the Start button. On the Start menu, point to Programs. Some of your programs are in groups which are displayed as folders. Point to Accessories, and then click WordPad. A blank WordPad On the Word Here at Parnell Aerospace, quality is king. But high quality and high productivity have always seemed to be at odds. Not anymore. Ever since we switched to Windows 95, our employees have managed to maintain the same high quality standards, but in a fraction of the time. How? Simple. The features in Windows 95 are designed for maximum ease of use, combined with maximum speed. We've included this section to help you learn about these features so you too can become more productive in no time. You'll see just how simple it is to use shortcuts and shortcut menus, as well as how to get instant help whenever you need it. Windows 95 is filled with convenient features designed to help you move quickly through everyday tasks. In this lesson, you'll see that some of the features you use the most are just a mouse click away. The first two exercises feature context-sensitive shortcut menus, which display with a right mouse click, and shortcut icons you can create yourself for quick access to programs and files you use often. Then you'll learn how to quickly open files and programs using the Find command and the Run command.
point to an empty area of the desktop, and then click the right mouse button once. Right click. Notice the shortcut menu that appears, listing shortcut commands for the desktop. Right click the My Computer icon and notice the different commands that appear on this shortcut menu. Using the left mouse button, click an empty area of the desktop to close the shortcut menu. To open My Computer, double click the My Computer icon. Right click the title bar at the top of the My Computer window and then click Close on the shortcut menu. Just because you're learning a new operating system doesn't mean you have to stop working to do it. Windows 95 gives you help whenever and wherever you need it. In this lesson, you'll learn how to get all the assistance you need by clicking Help on the Start menu. You'll find and open topics using the Contents, Index, and Find tabs in Help. And then you'll explore two other types of help. Troubleshooter, which provides step-by-step -step solutions to common problems, and What's This? context-sensitive help that explains individual elements in a dialog box. Click the Start button and then click Help. Click the Contents tab to make it active. Double-click How To. Double-click Change Windows Settings change how Windows looks, and then changing the background of the desktop. In the Windows Help window, read Step 1, and then click the arrow button. The Display Properties dialog box appears on the desktop. In the Windows Help window, read Step 2 and then click the underscored word, Pattern. A definition of the word appears. Click anywhere on the desktop to close the definition. Click the Related Topics button. You may need to scroll down the Windows Help page by clicking the down scroll arrow on the scroll bar until you see Related Topics. Double click using a picture as the desktop background to see the related topic. Then, at the top of the Windows Help window, click Back to display the previous topic. Click the Close button in the title bar of the Display Properties dialog box, and then click Help Topics in the Windows Help window. Click the Index tab to make it active. In the first text box, type Display. Double-click Background Pictures or Patterns Changing in the list of topics. In the Topics Found dialog box, double-click Changing the Background of your Desktop. In the Windows Help window, click Help Topics. Click the Find tab to make it active. If this is the first time you have used this feature, the Find Setup Wizard dialog box appears. Click Next to accept the default settings, and then click Finish. Type Display in the first text box. In the second list, click Display, and double-click Changing the Background of Your Desktop in the third list. Click the Close button in the title bar of the Windows Help dialog box. In the sales orders department, we use spreadsheets, a word processor, email, and network connections all at the same time. So what does it take to reach the level of productivity that your department demands? Well, it's a matter of mastering Windows, and that is what this section is all about. 
Everything you ever wanted to know about a window is covered here, from the simple to the slightly more complex. When you complete this section, you'll have a strong foundation for moving on to more advanced tasks and, of course, increased productivity. Mm -hmm. I think of windows as rectangular boxes on my computer screen that run programs or display files. I can open and close them, enlarge or reduce them, make them longer or shorter, move them to the side, push them to the corner, make them fill the screen, split them in two, reduce them to a button, set them side by side, or one over the other. I can work with windows however it suits me, and so can you. This lesson teaches you the characteristics of a window and how you can control each of them for greater visibility, faster access, and better organization. Although a window looks like a simple rectangle full of information, it is actually a flexible object. You can manage a window's position and size in several different ways. By dragging the title bar, you can move the window around the desktop. Dragging the border of a window changes the window's height or width. Dragging a corner changes the height and width simultaneously. The horizontal scroll bar moves the window's contents horizontally without changing the window's size or location. The vertical scroll bar moves the window's contents vertically without changing the window's size or location. When the title bar of one window appears as a different color than the title bars on the other open windows, the window is active. Double-clicking the title bar enlarges the window to fill the entire screen, or if it is already enlarged, returns it to its previous size and position. Clicking the Maximize button expands the window to fill the entire screen. The Maximize button changes to the Restore button. Clicking the Restore button returns the window to its previous size and position. Clicking the Minimize button hides the window, but leaves a button with its name on the taskbar. Clicking the Taskbar button displays the window again. Clicking the Close button closes the window and removes its button from the taskbar.